Uh, I'd hope you're ready for some fucking critical race theory, aka anti-white dude studies. Cringe. But interestingly, I think a lot of our presentations are going to converge. So, um, you know, as we uh, start to think about CRT as a tool of resistance, um, I want us to first discuss the. Change. Why are people in the university system teaching so-called resistance? Why aren't they teaching law and order? I, I mean. That alone should bug anyone of a discerning mind. Challenges to even achieve what Derek Bell calls interest convergence. And I want to start, start by sharing a little story. So after one of my talks on white supremacy and white privilege, several white parents approached me with a question. When would it be a good age to start talking to their children about race? And so they had in their mind some mythical age. When yeah, that's an di uh, interesting question, I guess. Uh, they... Yeah, they want them in probably as early as possible, right? Kindergarten, preschool, the white kids in particular, um, learning about, like, ma, white privilege, ma, patriarchy, all this gobbledygook, fucking commie nonsense that's meant to just scramble people's brains. In particular, like, the white, <clears throat> blue-collar, sort of, like, quasi-conservative Christian population. They want them demoralized, uh, deracinated, robbed of their identity, that sort of thing. Uh, turn into, like, rugged individuals. Uh, so they're easier to control and sort of demoralize that way get them to give up the resources and money and prostrate themselves to this stupid shite. So they probably, yeah, they probably, I'm going to guess that they're going to suggest like roughly kindergarten, preschool, but I don't, I mean, I don't think that you should be politically talking about race with your kids really at all. I mean, I mean, they should fit. Uh, I guess as soon as they encounter this sort of stuff, like put it into actual context, you know what I mean? Like, real context let them know what it is like an attack on <laughs> on them as a white person when their children would be able to understand race and racism after all race and racism are far too complex and burdened with sadness what and they couldn't bear the thought of their good children emo the shame of being vilified as racist for simply being a white person and that is that is ultimately what they're doing you know <laughs> for them Race was about racial diversity, which should be celebrated and enjoyed. Cox. They want to use terms like racial progress rather than progress against racism. They wanted to use terms oh, like wow. racial motivations and racially charged rather than simply racist to describe racism. And so begins My the lands. problematic and contradictory ways that white kids are socialized into whiteness and the language of race. Did you... I mean, that, that was just so fucking trivial, right? I mean... That, that's just like a, the only that, that that's the only response that that can warrant is a very 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 animated sarcastic oh oh my lands like that that's all I can really muster for that like I don't know about you so for these parents there would be a time so to fucking to want talk about racism but there was also no great urgency so these are the kind of people these people are paid to basically sit in university and like worry about there being a white family out there somewhere that hasn't sufficiently sat their fucking kid down at the dinner, white kid down at the dinner table and sufficiently browbeaten him on the issue of race, like, on, on his whiteness and that sort of thing. And uh, they're being given buku bucks to do this. It's, it's pretty scary, They dude. perceived racism on the decline because racism exists primarily through masked figures of neo-Nazis and hooded clans people. Yeah, Star Wars and characters. Maga hats. Oh, MAGA hats. There it is. Uh, the obligatory fucking MAGA reference comparing it to Nazis and stupid shit like that. Uh, you know. Uh, what are you, you going to do with these fucking idiots? Parents' bias and bigotry and racism. Point and laugh. From low education. Bad manners. Etiquette. Poor life choices and behavior. Being based. Red-pilled. But not Chad. talking about race and racism means that these kids also lose an opportunity to develop a sensitivity to racism. It's what oh. Sol Rosano and also call a theoretical sensitive sensitivity that comes from intentional practice. Right. So they want to get them, like I said, they want to get them earlier so that they can get them ultra sensitive to the issue of race early on. <sighs> Indoctrinate them into being just soy, soy beards and soy, uh, <clears throat> just soy pods, you know. Fuck. So they're Nobody not wants that. <laughs> they're understanding of the subtle ways that racism persists. As a result, kids of color know racism, while white kids know racism. So by the time white parents choose what? to talk about race and racism, racism is already anchored in big acts of violence and violation, 
and neither the parents nor the children have the language or what? Understanding, to, understanding to the subtle varieties of racism. So I'm you know, bewildered by when we these people the videos that uh, record Cairns and Cairns and, you know, their violent ways of expressing uh, racism. They're what? Interesting. What, what, has this guy ever watched World Star Hip Hop? What, he's saying Karens and Kens are the ones violent. Like, how so? Like, is he talking about, like, when a Karen, so called, was, like, recording the black dude harassing her at the dog park? And she, she ended up, that girl, I believe, ended up suing her employer for firing her over that. She got fired over that because, of course, the cancel mob came after her for uh, effectively trying to defend her own being against this psycho fucking black dude messing with him. Uh,. I'm just, I don't know, I, I want to know, like, if there are any, like, insano wine cat lady, like, white progressives watching this channel, like, hate watching my channel right now. Uh, what do you think about that incident? Uh, I'd, I'd love to see your hate comments in the, in the description thing so far for a change. So recording these sort of, mo these explicit examples of, of uh, the racism in our, in our public spaces. They're so explicit and subtle. He said he uses the word subtle and explicit, and I mean I don't know. What, he doesn't give any examples. It's nebulous and vague. And Fuck so these people. So far as like I said, they're uh, they're recording them. But the problem is that these are big events, and these are um, recordings that sort of keep replaying uh, what racism is supposed to look like. And I want to contrast the Karen and Ken videos with a much more awful subtle, premise. Problematic encounter which is with nick sandman and <laughs> what? Phillips on the steps of dude's the going there Memorial. i think most of us remember that as uh we might refer to him as the covington King. they're still going there at least well i mean about a year or, or, you know or several months ago they were still going there they're still going after the covington kids for smirking smirking sandman the chad dude smirking at the psychotic toothless fucking valor stealing awful engine like <laughs> drunk fucking idiot banging a drum in his face uh they're still going after him uh <laughs> didn't he settle or like sue a bunch of fucking media outlets rightfully so for that one to every i mean person of color that has ever seen that picture every person of color knows that smirk oh yeah i'm gonna have to play some groiper tunes for background music for this one yeah. They've seen that smirk. They've seen that stance. They know that person. Right. Um, and so, but when you talk about racism, it's really hard to describe and start, it's hard to articulate what that particular interaction is uh, to people who don't understand the subtleties of how racism <laughs> persists. Liar. So, along the lines of not talking about racism, the parents were also establishing what Leonardo calls a racial alibi. And so this alibi provides a preemptive defense against being considered or even labeled as racist. Because after all, they're not products of poor home environments, nor were they racially insulated from diverse experiences. They become the atypical white person in their minds. What? But in case they do engage in racism, they at least have an alibi, which sounds something like, I'm not racist, sort of fill in the blank, right? Because I buy pot friends. What? So another problem is that these. Am I supposed to believe that these people actually care about this to this degree? Really? And here, white feelings are. This this is just so obviously a fucking grift. <laughs> Come on. Key to racist into non racist Additionally, it also means that white individuals believe they understand the experiences of people of color and thus racism even though they've never experienced racism. No sane person cares about that so lack of urgency who's white right now. also exposes the white racial frame or what Leonardo and Mills consider to be the white epistemological position that assumes racism is easing and getting better. This is white liberalism and its investment in racial progressivism. Oh, white liberalism. So words, these parents are teaching. Yeah, I remember watching a, uh, a stream, Madison uh, school board meeting, where they were trying to like get cops out of schools. So the BLM psychos siege the town hall meeting, and like some crazy like side shaved hipster lady teacher was saying that like white liberalism is like the decorum that white people show when they take turns speaking and debating and stuff like that. Apparently, like, keeping your lawn mode is white liberalism. I don't know. It's just this crazy... Like, now we know why people come out of college so fucking crazy. Because they're manufacturing 
they're, look at this. They're manufacturing all these psycho blue haired, cow pierced, you know, bovine pierced fucking uh, arsonists and child molesters. They're being manufactured, if not encouraged, via this system. It's absolute psychosis. I'm teaching the children that as long as people are treated equally, then racial progress has been achieved. Okay, yeah, I mean... Egalitarianism is essentially a colorblind worldview that continues to evade color and power. Egalitarianism but, egalitarianism in and of itself is not even good, but he's saying, like, it's not the right kind of egalitarianism or it's not enough egalitarianism. You know, $20 trillion in Liberia and, like, whatever the fuck else <laughs> rep attempts at reparations that uh, the whites have given. I mean... White privilege is simply the ability to decenter race and racism and color and power. And without color... But we can't do that. What do you mean? Power, We're not allowed to do that. Situations where it's illegal for white people to start an explicitly white neighborhood. Like, it's illegal to do that in the United States. What do you mean? You, you, white people literally are not allowed to... I mean, barring them being, like, super rich or whatever. Uh, but they're literally not allowed to at least physically insulate themselves from diversity and be colorblind in that way. Um, unless you're like one of these boomers who was lucky enough to get like rich in the eighties or nineties. I mean, <laughs> at this point, there's a lot of white people out there that I think can't very well insulate themselves from this color, color dynamic, Some people are which is increasingly every day, day by day, anti-white. I might add more equal than others. Now, colorblindness is appealing because it seduces people into believing in a common humanity and equality without regard for asymmetrical racial power dynamics. No, so even more deeply no, no, no. Colorblindness is white people just responding to conditioning. Like, they have to view themselves as identityless, sort of raceless, um, you know, rugged individuals rather than a part of, like, a racial group like every other race. So they are taught to view, like the MLK quote, like view people as individuals without race, because that's how they view, view themselves, right? They're trained to try to like be egalitarian like that because they're going by the old guard, like liberal hippie 60s. Like the conservatives of today are basically uh, liberals of the 60s or 90s, you know what I mean? But that's not enough for these radicals. They want like pure 100% submission on the part of uh, white middle America, and it's pretty fucking sickening. Like, listen, is, is what Charles Mills calls the epistemology of white racial ignorance, wherein white people have gone about their daily lives for decades without attending to or registering the racism that's occurring all around them. And Their nope. white racial ignorance is not aberrant, as we have heard, but normal and affirmed by other white people. And accordingly, racism is how by white no other whites are going to fucking whites are the only people that will scold other whites in private. What are you talking about for the racism? What on earth are you, is George Takei here talking about? Colors Insanity. Because good white people do not do intentional harm. And so following suit, Ugh. scientific positivism could only operationalize racists in their most extreme forms. White racial ignorance relegates racism as a perception rather than an experience among people of color. And it also discounts the affirmation and liberation that black and indigenous and other people of color gain from counter stories. And Who so cares? to directly challenge and complicate that white racial progressive and liberal framework, critical race theorists present a different epistemological stance that centralizes race and racism in this yeah so their epistemological stance is getting to these liberal uh guilt-ridden white people and being like hey um you're not guilty enough <laughs> you're not salty about your whiteness enough and uh you haven't made en with enough of your paycheck yet you haven't made with enough uh voluntary reparations in addition to the involuntary reparations that are coming with the biden administration land redistribution i mean just straight up they're not fucking um <laughs> they're not including white people in the covid relief did you see that shit white people are literally not included in the covid relief packages it's <laughs> white people's businesses were probably shut down like way more too you know what i mean like overall like and that's the, that's the idea like shut down white people's businesses have antifa crash and smash them and burn them and uh, refuse them COVID relief after it's all uh, said and done. Like, there's probably, like, an untold number of 
old, you know, uh, corner drug stores and like diners and stuff that are just now gone, like forever. Like old, old hangouts that you know have like tons of memories. They're gonna be paved over by developers of the usual suspect variety, the usual tribal variety, and they're gonna just like replace them with fucking high-rise apartments that are gonna be. They're gonna house all the fucking immigrants that Biden just gave amnesty to, and they're gonna go on the dole and pump out 18 million fucking kids that don't learn the language. And you see where this is going? Like, <laughs> this is fucking terrible, this dude. Is because and these guys are like, these guys are getting paid to just you know do this and encourage this. They're not producing anything of objective value. They're not. They're not. These aren't hot takes. These are. <laughs> like freezer burn takes it's just the place that you start means that it 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 um sets about a certain number of assumptions that leads you to a different conclusion so critical race theories centralized race and racism by doing so they state that not only is racism permanent but the idea that upward linear progress is a myth that is the words racial progress whenever you hear that should always be understood as two words that are doing a lot of heavy lifting in any statement what but in saying that racism is permanent we must be clear that we don't mean that interpersonal bias is simply the problem that needs eradication racism racism is permanent means that any one racist law policy or act has exponential and catalytic effects in our society that benefit and protect whiteness. That's just while gobbledygook. Negative, while negatively impacting BIPOC peoples. So immigration... I mean, like everybody listening to this knows, I mean, immediately that was just word salad, gobbledygook, academic gibberish. Um, this should never... I mean, this is why 90% um, of people that are at college should not be at college. Okay? This is the... Uh, University of Maryland, I believe. Uh, Dr. William Ming Liu. Yeah. Special ed, dude. Man, oh man, oh man. This was fucking horrible. Housing, banking, law enforcement, educational policies rarely, if ever, have to mention white people because its interpretation and application are always situated in extant practices that already favor white people. No, they don't. What this means... They take white people's money and give it to your people and black people. Stop lying, you disgusting slimeball. George Decay wannabe. Is ...that the practices need to change laws and policies and not the other way around. Moreover, any educational and economic progress made by black, indigenous, and other peoples of color also mean educational and economic gains for white people. This is what interest convergence is. Interest convergence represents a point in time when progress is demanded by circumstances and where white interest in maintaining their good and innocent non-racist positions is threatened. Cease, uh, what did he say? Um, you shouldn't. His positions is threatened. Educational and economic gains for white people. This is what interest convergence is. Interest convergence represents a point in time when progress is demanded by circumstances and where white interest in maintaining their good and innocent non-racist positions is don't don't have any interest in maintaining a non-racist position white people don't threatened. don't in don't see this is this is just them just nuking people's brains in a cult-like fashion you know this is more of this white fragility stuff and cult-like indoctrination kafka trap sort of stuff where they're putting you on the defensive perpetually. They're always on the attack and always attacking and deconstructing your identity. And and they their framework is any attempt at defending your identity is an attack, like a v act of violence, basically, or an act of fragility, or it's like you lashing out. I mean, it's so self evidently cult shit. <laughs> it's so self evidently cult shit, and it's so self evidently anti-white like i'm not gonna call it critical race theory dude it's anti-white guy theory let's call it what it is institutional and cultural changes occur and benefit bipoc peoples but interest convergence is always incentivized for white people such that their gains will constantly and consistently outpace the gains of bipoc people so to finish critical race theory provides us with many of the tools to understand our current circumstances 
CRT is a tool that we can use to decipher the multiplicity of white intentions and acts. Wow, dude. Even when those acts are meant for the benefit of black, indigenous, and other peoples of color. They're studying you like lab rats, white people. I mean, like, in way they're just str strategizing ways to basically fleece you, like, <laughs> like gaslight and hoodwink you into thinking that you need to just, like, give them money, basically. Money, resources, put your butt on the line for them. Like, that's what this is. It's r happening right before you, like... CRT helps. This is institutional too. Of white intentions. And Institutionalized. Actions. And as many of our students and colleagues are discovering racism and talking about institutional, structural, and cultural white supremacy, it is a fair question to ask why now? Thank you. You have a lot to cash in on. That's why. That's why now. I'll turn that up back over. So you were. Hold on a second. You were this guy. Dr. William Ming Liu, professor and chair, Department of Counseling, Higher Education, Social Services, Anti-Racism Teaching Series, UMD Solidarity. So, fuck, there it is. <laughs> Woke and blue-pilled, uh, you know, mealworm chopping, soy shakes, slugging. <laughs> George Takei over here really does not like you, Whitey. How about that? <laughs> 